This object you see right here being towed by these bulldozers was named Jumbo. Jumbo was 12 feet 8 inches in diameter, or 3.6 meters in diameter. It was 25 feet long, or 7.6 meters long. Its walls were 14 inches thick, or 35 and a half centimeters thick, and it weighed 200 tons, or 181 metric tons. Its original purpose was to have the first atomic bomb placed inside of it and detonated. The reason for this was that the engineers were afraid that the conventional explosives used to trigger the nuclear explosion would malfunction and blow the plutonium and uranium to pieces and scatter this very expensive material throughout the desert. They concluded that if they placed the bomb inside Jumbo and there was a malfunction, they would be able to collect all the pieces of the very expensive plutonium and uranium settled down here at the bottom of Jumbo, right in here. When the Manhattan Project began, it was very difficult and costly to extract plutonium and uranium from the Earth. However, as the project progressed, they figured out more efficient ways and less costly ways to gather the material. They also concluded that if they detonated the first atomic bomb inside of Jumbo, they would not get an accurate reading of the bomb's full potential. Therefore, they decided not to use Jumbo for its original purpose and decided to detonate the bomb in open space. There were two main parts to this bomb. There was the conventional explosive triggering device known as the gadget, which you see in this photo right here. It was an explosive sphere that was designed to explode inward to a center point. At the center was the nuclear material that would begin the chain reaction. Here is a schematic of the device. At the very center you had a beryllium pellet. The beryllium pellet had a perfect fit at the center of a plutonium-239 sphere that came in two halves. That sphere was put together and it had a perfect fit into a cylinder of uranium that came in two halves. When that cylinder was placed together, it also had a perfect fit inside of a sphere of uranium. And that uranium sphere was placed inside of a sphere of aluminum. The aluminum sphere was placed at the center of the gadget. The conventional explosives of the gadget blowing inward compressed the aluminum, the uranium, the plutonium, and eventually the beryllium to 15 times smaller than its original size. As a result of the beryllium pellet being compressed, it released a burst of neutrons which split atoms, causing them to release enormous amounts of energy, giving birth to the nuclear explosion. Now the gadget itself, this device right here, was assembled in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Here on Google Earth, I will go to Los Alamos, New Mexico to find the location or to show you the location where they actually assembled the gadget. Here is Los Alamos. And it was assembled at this facility here. In this exact building right here. Now here's a ground level photo of that building you can see here. And you can also see this cement foundation holding up this description of the building and what it was used for. Back here on Google Earth you can see the building here again. And then right there is the foundation with the description of what the building was used for sitting right here. Now the core of the bomb, the nuclear core of it, was actually assembled much further south. Down here near Trinity test site. By the way, this is the test site. This is the location where they eventually detonated the bomb. But just to the south of it, right here in what is known as the McDonald House, right here in the northeast corner of the house which would be right here that is the room where they assembled the core here is a photo of a man named herbert lear in his right hand he has a shock proof case carrying the core into the mcdonald house this door right here that he is walking into is this door right here on the right so it was inside this room right here that they assembled the core to the atomic bomb Back here at Google Earth, that photo was taken from this direction, looking west. The door that Herbert Lear walked into was over here, and it was this room right here where they assembled the core to the bomb. Now when it was time, they drove the gadget down from Los Alamos 
to this location right here. And in that exact location, this 100 foot or 30 meter tower was standing. The gadget was placed at the bottom right in here. And it was in this location here where they took the core of the nuclear bomb and placed it inside the gadget. The gadget was then lifted up to the top of the tower. As you can see here, this is the actual photo of it being lifted up into the tower. It was placed inside this structure at the top of this tower. And on Monday, July 16th, 1945, at 529 and 45 seconds in the morning, the first atomic bomb was successfully detonated from on top of this tower right here in this photo. Now here is an aerial photo of what it looked like after detonation. And shortly after it was detonated, they drove this modified Sherman M4 tank into the blast area. And every living thing within one mile or 1.61 kilometers of ground zero was obliterated. The 100 foot or 30 meter steel tower had disappeared. They found a crater 2,400 feet across, or 731 meters across, that was 10 feet deep, or 3 meters deep. Now if you look over here at this little dark spot, this is where they put Jumbo. Since they did not use Jumbo for its original purpose, they wanted to see what kind of an effect a nuclear bomb would have on an object the size of Jumbo. So they suspended Jumbo from this tower right here. After the blast, the tower was blown apart and Jumbo fell to the ground and remained upright, as you can see right here. Two years later, in 1947, Army officials placed eight 500-pound bombs, that's eight 226-kilogram bombs, inside of Jumbo to see what kind of an effect they would have on Jumbo. The blast blew both ends of Jumbo off. Afterwards, they buried Jumbo. In the early 1970s, Jumbo was dug up and placed in its current location. And back here at Google Earth, you have ground zero. Jumbo was placed approximately out here. After Jumbo was blown up and buried, in the early 70s they dug it up and drug it to its current location, which you can see right here on Google Earth. This is what is left of Jumbo right here. Now as a memorial for this test, you go to the center right here, you see this figure standing right there. This is actually an obelisk memorializing the actual site of where the first nuclear bomb was detonated. And here's a close-up photo of the obelisk with a plaque that says Trinity Site, where the world's first nuclear device was exploded on July 16th, 1945. In this photo of the obelisk, you can see this right here surrounding one of the four foundations that was holding up the tower. Back here at Google Earth, if we zoom in a little closer, the plaque would actually be on this side right here. And that foundation is approximately right in here, which would suggest that the other three foundations were approximately here, here, and here. So there you have it. A little bit of history and the location of the Trinity test site, where they successfully detonated the first atomic bomb in the history of the world on July 16th, 1945, right here on Google Earth.